Hi everyone. Um, at the top of the hour, we're going to continue our coral reef model. Um, today we're going to be making starfish, crabs and sea snails along with some more coral and plants. I'll see you then. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. I hope you've all had a good, I think it's a week, we've we've been off, oh two weeks, sorry, I lose track of these, the internet, that was why, and remember when I feel ill, yeah, <clears throat> the joys of the internet. Um, we are on a very hot day, in a house that runs pretty hot anyway, I think 
they got buy one get one free on insulation in this house because it can be snowing outside and we still don't need to have our heating on and I'm in one of the hotter rooms of the house so this brings with it interesting um, effects to your clay you'll find that your clay actually is softer in hot weather I mean obviously if you start going over the cooking temperature then you're going to be a real problems for, life as well. for, for probably yourself as well because it's it is 110 degrees then so yeah I would say go sit in a nice bath don't sit there claying but um, it will mean that the clay gets a bit softer and a bit more stickier if you find it hard to use your clay you can leach it which is kneading it on a bit of paper so that some of the plasticizing oils in it come out and soak into the paper which will make it firm up a bit if you overdo it though you're going to need to put either some liquid polymer clay or worse ways a bit of baby oil in to readdress the problem but um, yeah warm days tend to bring interestingness with it cold days have its own problems as well you'll find it hard to get your clay to not be crumbly and stiff so yeah unfortunately when you're working with a product that is te temperature sensitive it's temperature temperature sensitive it just is how it is um i hear that people selling in america who go and do the craft stalls outside hi arty hearty life um that when they go and sell their polymer clay out in these craft fairs and in florida it gets some temperatures um polymer clay even baked becomes softer in very high temperatures as soon as it cools down again it will be back at its normal firmness but um yeah people were coming and looking at her jewelry and sort of like oh it's um very bendy isn't it she's like not normally not normally so back to uh coral reef so as you can see i have filled in all the gaps with plant life all the way around there are a couple on here that i didn't get around to showing you last session so i'm going to quickly show you what i did with them first and then we're going to start actually on some sea life finally Ooh. which is if it's between you and me it's the whole reason why i've done a coral reef scene in the first place because i was racking my brains on how i could do a tutorial on things like crabs and snails and starfish and then come out with something at the end that someone would want because normally I do my animal figurines with a little crystal heart but I don't think there's a big market for crabs and snails I may be wrong but there we are so I thought if I embed it into a bit of scenery it will look more interesting and more appealing so what I've added is some of the greens and some of the oranges so again if you want to see how i've done all the stuff i don't cover today it's in the previous video on my youtube channel right so let's go for these oranges if you can see let's hold it up Ooh. where it's not baked i've got to be careful can you see that orange kind of pom-pom it's hard to get the texture with the lighting that didn't help it's quite scruffed up I will I show you right we will see if I can get it when I show you how I'm making it what I've mixed is some red and some orange basically both FIMO standard they don't call it pillar box red but I think it's true red and orange brings you that sort of neon coral colour 
that's what we got here neon coral ball of clay like so now I'm going to put it down on a glass tile so I can hold it up more to the camera but you're going to want to put it down on your counter so you actually can look at what you're doing push it down so that it doesn't move around you want a flat surface anyway all you're going to do get your pin tool start as low down on the bottom edge as you possibly can because you want to cover all this surface so I literally if I'm on a glass tile go up on its side and use my finger to support and you're going to carve in little spirals so you're doing that little spirals that's quite a big one but it's that motion but tiny all over the surface and it gives it a scuffed up kind of bobbly effect I'll just do a little patch in the corner you're gonna have bits fall off what I tend to do because I don't want to waste clay is I get it and I push them back on and tap it all down to make sure that you still got the texture that might be a good way of showing can you see there's like a scuffness to it still it's weird how this camera is working because in real life it's got a lot more texture than that um, maybe that yeah that shows it a little better do you see what I mean lots of scuffing effects so let's do it on camera on a flat bit like this and we're doing little scuffs all the way around until you've covered it all and it all looks like that yeah that shows it much better and that looks very much like a coral that you get it's, um looks almost like a pom-pom and it's in that dark color so when you need to put it on what i tend to do is scuff all the way around the outside other than the tiny top dot so then you can pick it up from the bottom and that top dot push it in place and once you've firmly pushed it down then scuff up that top surface because you securing it in place will smudge out all the texture you just put in okay a couple of those dotted in now these kind of lumpy knobbly ones like that um, we're going to probably need to change the colour back to normal there you have okay right that is pretty much um, the iconic coral look what I've done is mix their standard orange with a canary yellow and what I'm going to do is I start out by just pinching a little stick out so you're into that sort of teardrop look let's move this out of the way so you can actually see the shape that I'm dealing with here yeah pull that out what I find useful I like this tool you can use a knitting needle or just anything kind of wide rounded and firm because what you're going to do is start to encourage new little blobs that you're going to pinch and twist into shapes so like this there's not a lot of clay there so I'm just going to push some so I can get my fingers around it bring out a new little knobbly shape and go all the way around wherever you can and these are not uniform you don't look for some symmetry they just develop these little bumps to the coral see I'll probably put another one in here you can come up using the bottom part of the clay and push it up 
like that. Hi Liz! So if you've not got enough depth in some of these, use your tool just to push down the gaps like so. Nice little knobbly coral shape. See? Couple of those plonked in. Looks fine. If you end up being a bit over vigorous and you start to crack your clay let's do that oh look i cracked my clay oopsie oopsie use your tool you can also use a ball tool push it onto itself like that and just bring that join over and bring it back into the shape you want see you don't have to start again if you do that because you'll be starting again a lot if you try that one just keep coming in with your tool until you get a shape that you think looks kind of like that you want yeah and find the bottom end usually the thickest bit that you've been working from and stick that into your model so that's two of them that's all the orangey bits that I haven't gone over. Now, the only other two things that are, that are on here already that I've not gone through are some of these green fillers that look a bit mossy. So, where are we? That stuff there. And up here, can you see these little ones? The little bally curly things. So, what we're doing for that, for the first one, I started out with some leaf green and then I mixed some leaf green with some gold just to give a slightly different colour definition to them both. Then it's really simple, we're going to cut a little bit off of each colour. put them together like so doesn't really matter but I put them together and we're going to start to shred them down like this and it's a lot like chopping up garlic when you want to do crushed garlic use this hand to hold the corner of your tissue blade and then you can move it around with the other side and it lets you do a lot of quick chops very safely make sure you keep your finger from tucking under like that you want to hold the top bit just the top bit and we're coming along and moving it and mixing it and shredding it once you've got them down into small enough pieces like so See, it comes down pretty sorry about that I try not to squeak the counter because I know a lot of people dislike that once you've got it shredded down see how quickly you end up with a lot of moss you just lightly bunch a bit together so that it's roughly sticking to each other kind of flattish like so and you get that Dush straight on. Sorry. So, model, you just get it on your finger and push it into place where you want it. There's actually probably a little too much for that gap there, like so. And that's how you end up with the mossy looking one. Really quick. And that also makes very good grass. Um, if you want you can chop a few different greens into it if you're doing a large larger patch so that there's more just more um color depth rather than it just being one uniform color just picking this up getting it out of the way so the last bit were those little curly ones this i've got leaf green that I mixed with a huge amount of ochre and a tiny pinch of brown to end up with that sort of 
um, army camo green sort of olivey colour. Then I chopped it down into lots of little cubes, tiny cubes, and this one does take a little bit more, slightly more annoying to do. What you're going to do is get one of your cubes, pinch it so that it's a little flat disc. Don't bother shaping it, you don't need to. Just any shape, as long as it's small, pinch it flat. You want it about that sort of thickness, about a millimetre. You're going to take one end and the other end between two fingers and you're going to twist like so. Keep twisting, twisting, twisting and then fold that twist around like a little donut not donut croissant that's the one I'm looking for see let's hold it up to the camera and you've got that sort of lumpy but with flatness like flat ridges ball and you make lots of them up so pushing it flat one end one end twist so that you're starting to get a spiral then take it from a stick roll it into a bit of a ball twist into a spiral and fold, it. fold the ends yeah. into each other and you end up with lots of these little ridged up balls and they look very much like another form of I think it's moss or algae or the seed version of moss but yeah so loads of those little balls and put them into place as well just push them on tap them down you're sorted so that brings us to where we are here apart from I had a necklace i bought from the charity shop which had these brownish shell beads on them and i've stuck a few of those in to give those nice shiny patches and i've stuck in a few round tumbled agate because i like the lines in it all i've got a whole box full of the stuff right that's how we ended up here okay now for the bits that are really cute let me just quickly clean my blade off because you don't want to go cut into something and it's got a load of green on it already cleanliness makes a difference with your claying right this is the tray of the little guys we're gonna make so we've got that brightness is not working with that pink sorry there we go bright pink starfish little red and white crabs and some sea snails okay so let's start with the crabs first because it includes white and white is always one that picks up every color now like i said in the last video everything i'm getting as accurate as i can within the confines of what i can do in clay so these crabs actually had white legs with red dots and the same with the claws i could not get down small enough with those dots to not make it and not make it look like it had striped legs I thought in the end this looked better. Right, what you're going to do, you're starting out with a ball of white, you're going to take that ball, pinch and twist and you're into a teardrop. Now get your finger, push on the base of that teardrop to really give that flat uh, but slightly rounded shape. And then you're going to go on to <coughs> a tile or, <coughs> sorry about this, 
a tile or a glass desk and flatten out the bottom maybe bring that in a little bit so that it's a bit stumpier that's the shape you want to end up with see kind of stumpy looking teardrop shape then you're going on and you are making lots and lots of little red dots to cover it and how I do that is I start out with a very thin stick of red clay come along and cut that into tiny little discs and you're working really tiny and I find it easier to do that with an exacto blade than with a larger tissue blade it's better at giving you <clears throat> a clearer vision because when you've got a tissue blade you really need to use two hands with it and you tend to get your hands in the way of seeing where you're cutting so any craft knife would be fine I use exacta because it's a good brand and it's what we had now going to use my ball tool to pick it up how do I even get a feather in here that's not even possible right with picking small things up on your ball tool you're going to tap it basically if you can see that's it's picked it up yeah now what you're going to do is get it into the spot that you want let's move this around going to push that down with your ball tool if it doesn't release off your ball tool twist your ball tool just a slight rotation to the side will lift that dot away from your tool you get pretty quick at it coming in doing that if you want your dots to be perfectly perfectly round you can spend some time going in there and rolling them into little balls but this is at such a small level I'm not sure it matters so you cover your white so now it looks kind of like a white strawberry with red seeds now let's get this out of the way like so we're gonna get this I'm gonna put it down onto my glass board so that I can work on it and move it around and show you what I'm doing so legs four legs on each side you're gonna start out tiny little ball of your red on your tile or glass table you're going to roll it with your finger until it's slightly shorter than the length you want for the leg let's move this out so that you are not trying to compete for view once it's roughly the length you want that little bit extra you're going to come up to the very tip and make sure that you've rolled it out into a pointy tip see like so now you need eight of those I'm going to put that to one side because I'm going to put the legs on once I've got the claws now the claws I've, I'm very pleased with them I think they turn out really well what you're going to do red ball then get your white ball and put it on top see you got almost like a snowman but all the wrong colors then you're going to roll that into a ball like that once you've joined them you should have half red half white slightly under half white actually but what you're going to do now is from the red side you're going to bring that into a stick 
doesn't matter if a bit of the white comes down that's what you're aiming for so now you've got red stick with a mostly white ball on the top that's all attached see you can do this with your craft knife i love this it's a pair of nail scissors I find you get a better cut. Find the side that you like the most and you're going to just snip that white ball in half. See, let me put my hand behind it. So you've got a stick with like a little heart on top now. And you get your fingers in and one of those heart sides you're going to bring out into a point you can always bring the flat side out a bit more so that you can shape it and we'll shut the claw back again after and bring the other side into a point so now you've got that Y shape in white with a red bottom close them up and whoop, there you have it your crab claw see works really well doesn't it so now we're on to crab construction i like a ball tool for this the first oops helps if i make the second claw doesn't it shall i do this again then let's do it quick two balls rolled into one ball till the the seam is smooth get the red side twist and pull into a stick not too thin because you don't want it to be able to snap then you get the white side ball you put a whoop cut through the middle so that you end up with rabbit ears a heart whatever pinch that into a point pinch that side into a point close it back up crab claw and obviously you can work at a far bigger scale the bigger the scale the easier it is so i'm picking this up with the ball tool at the end like that now you want your first claw to go on the corner like that make sure it's firmly attached second claw whoop, pick up that goes in opposite corner like so got your claws on now legs pick them up and you're going to need four down one side and I attach them on before I position them so two make sure they're firmly attached on and there's a little bit of a gap three come on stop sticking there we are and the last one like that sometimes they just don't want to play ball do they you want to overlap it on the body so that you can attach one side by smushing it into the white see and you can see how they all slightly ticked up where I've pushed the end into the white to make sure they're firmly attached. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I bring it down to eye level so I can see it a bit better. I was going to say, and it should make it quicker for me. And then this first leg completely misbehaves. 
doesn't stick where I want it to and takes about the same amount of time there we go two three and four now you can be as wide ranging with your colour scheme as you want because there are so many different crabs out there really are now you can use your needle tool for this or you can use a ball tool I'm actually going to use one of my smaller ended ball tools what we're going to do is face the legs face it away from us with the legs facing towards you then starting from the last leg in the bottom V you're going to find a corner in the middle by bending that leg 90 degrees like that and giving it a tap with your ball tool to really get that joint in like so Whoop. like so so let's do it again up here get it put the leg in the position you want and then bend that corner so that it is fixed like that see if you started at the top by the claws they'll get in in the way of each other and you'll find it really hard to get them to bend how you want them to see and if you haven't attached it to the body properly at this stage these legs as soon as you try and put this bend into them they will fall right off so up here put the bend in and this I would say is one of the more fiddlier parts of crab making is getting these leg bends you can if you're really unconfident do it before you attach but I find doing that is even more fiddly because you've not got the glass holding it and the other legs to hold it against which I find really helps to make them look more realistic but you've got to get that right angle in properly there we go I can't wait till I can go to the beach next I really can't I bought a snorkel the other day not that British waters is clear enough really to go snorkeling but I'm totally going to give it a go so it's now looking very crab like all we got to do is put a couple of eyes on I've gone for neon yellow tiny little balls let's go like this and you're going to stick them on the front like that like that now, if you're making a bigger crab a crab technically has a vertical rectangle rectangular pupil but since we are working in absolute minuscule sizes here it's getting a dot yeah you do what you can you do what you can exactly and the same with a lot of this especially with underwater stuff when you're creating it you end up not being able to have as thinner tendrils as a lot of the plants have in the water because it's supported by water in air gravity has far more of an effect and you just can't do the same things so you've got to do as close as you can and hope it all blends into mimic okay i need my drink today it's too hot so a couple of crabs Whoop, let's lift you up 
I'm doing the one thing I tell people not to do. Free with your blade if it's stuck down firm. Now it's harder with these legs because you don't want to smudge them out of place. So I'd come in from the claw end and then pick it up like you would a normal crab from the back, like so, okay. so that you're not messing up the eyes. And donk, you go down with your mates. Starfish and end snails, yeah. Right, starfish. Pretty simple. Got some neon pink. Fimo, thank you for bringing the neon range back out. I mean, the blue and green neon kind of suck. They look like just your standard blue and green that you mixed a bit of white with, but the pink and yellow and orange, mwah love them absolutely love them and they keep bringing them out and then discontinuing them and then bringing them out and they've done the same thing with various effects colors like the um metallic red and green at the moment is next to impossible to get hold of so yeah turning it into a teardrop and then we're going to go around and do the next teardrop so that's two points three points and if you see I'm pushing it over so that I've got enough room to get to the clay now, I need to get two more points out of that and I've got two chunkier fingers so I'm going to use a tool just to convince it where I want that divide line now most people if you saw that will go eek has that going to be a starfish i better start again don't start again don't start again that's fine what we're going to do is use our glass tile or our board to start to get these looking how we want see already bit of an angling and it's looking better now it's so tempting to just use your ball tool and run it along the side but make sure at least if you're going to do that that you've got the right size ball tool don't do it with one that's too small it looks weird i know i've got too big a divide line there i'm going to tap it out a bit have a fiddle and you will get how you like it there we go i think that is looking far more like what i want there we are right you can just go patrick star level of starfish and just go pink they do exist but he'll need some shorts and copyright and all that sort of stuff i never go there so this is not bikini bottom this is just a coral reef so let's do the rest of it now the one that i found that lives at the great barrier reef whoop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop, lift you up has these really cool yellow ends so what i'm going to do is put these balls on and you'll find that if you just put them on like that they ain't gonna stay on see look how easy that is to roll off what you need to do is tap it down and then do that pinch and twist and it pushes all the sides together and joins it far better now see the difference i can move that around and it is not coming off the tip as opposed to the ball that i just pushed on look it just rolls right off there so put your ball on push it down firmly get the whole side of the starfish pinch and twist so three more of those i know it's misshaping my starfish i will come back and get it back into line it's because it's the fimo neon it's quite a sticky one even though most soft i don't think is this soft 
but you can make it behave itself you've just got to pull a frowny face and tell it that you're going to keep pushing it back in line but it's such a good shade of pink it's worth it last ball on the other, on here now like so twist there so that's the tips far more interesting already now like I said I was going to get its shape back again so I'm putting it back on its glass getting its shape how I want now for these little lines that are down there let's hold this up so you can see again Ooh, that's bright yeah they get the focus and the shade it, there we go I don't know how people do tutorial videos and it's just literally them on their jacks doing it no idea how they actually manage to do all the camera work at the same time as making stuff right what I've done is that neon pink I put a tiny 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 bit of it in with white so that it looks like the it's not such a stark jump from pink to white it still looks kind of whitish but it looks like it's actually meant to be so I'm just doing five little lines so one two three four five that can go away one end I want to make sure is pointy and tidy the other end I literally have zero care about don't bother putting any effort into it it is going to be covered up so once you've got nice little pointiness on one end use your ball tool to pick it up from the pointy side see and how I've done that you just hook your ball into it and you see it picks up you don't want your string to go all the way to the end but you do want it to go almost all the way to the end so if you put it down and it's not where you want it pick it back up and move it and then you want it central I will hold it up but I've got to go over the top of it to see that I've lined it right like that see almost to the end but not quite repeat that four more times doesn't matter if the center one overlaps and looks scruffy we're going to put a dot on top of that in a minute and it will cover the whole thing one of these days I'll get it to lay on the end at first time and not have to be picked back up sorry I stand a far better chance of it when I'm not holding it up so that the camera can see really well hot and bothered and I've got a hair in that one now I props to all those people who are miniature workers because I am this is about as miniature as I get I know there are people out there that go far smaller with their work than this But I don't get how they do it and actually don't just get frustrated by it all. So I will hold this up and show you what I've got. Right. There we are. You can see the centre of that looks really scruffy. It's just all, they're not meeting in the middle properly, they're overlapping yeah absolutely fine because we're gonna cover that once you've got them all in place push that line down so that it's firmly firmly stuck onto the rest of your starfish okay 
Now, I've made a slightly more raspberry pink shade of clay here. And again, it's hard to get colours to show up when you're working this small. What I'm going to do is pinch it so that it forms a disc but quite a thick one. I'd say that's about half a centimetre. Maybe three millimetres. And cover up that mess in the centre like so. See? Why I said do not bother putting in any effort to mix to make the middle bit look nice and you have a starfish and it is done so last one we'll do some snails and then I will put them on so we are going to do swirly snails what I've started out with dark brown so it's chocolate and black that one is um right let's go for this one next because that one is that one with white this is chocolate orange and yellow if you put chocolate and white together the <clears throat> shade of brown that you get is that it's more of a washed out brown than if you mix yellow and orange into it that you end up with what we commonly think of as a mid-range brown and then, you add white into that too. and then I add white into that to end up with this light one you can add a pinch of ochre if it goes a bit too sort of sickly coloured and that is just the standard chocolate little triangles so I've rolled it into a disc cut them into quarters stuck them together so you end up with a disc like that now from here we're going to roll that into a stick you will find that it does that sort of cup shape on the ends does not matter really doesn't you'll also find at one end it's possible that your lines are thicker or thinner see that brown almost completely vanishes there that's also fine you don't want it too too thin so it's big enough for you to work with hold one end on the side firm don't move it the other side you're going to run along so that it makes these spirals don't sit there trying to hand twist like that by the time you get enough in you will have RSI repetitive strain injury just keep using your counter to swirl it up like that now if you get to one end and you think there's not enough colour in that just take it off that middle bit is really what we want so got stripey stick like so now we're gonna pinch that stick how did that do it that was it we're gonna get it so that we pull the stick so that it's closer it may concertina that's fine but what we're looking for is this sort of shape like that so you're making a elongated triangle like so yeah pinch it flat like this now this is the bit that took me ages to work out how to get that nice snail shape um what I found is you're going to need some ball tools and I'm going to need my bigger one so what we're going to start out with let's see if I can do this on the camera because I'm doing this only once we're going to twist 
that corner that's a little thin tipped bit we're going to twist that on itself like that see made a little twisty pointy bit then this big flat bit goes all the way around like this then we get a ball tool in there I think that might be too big for this size shell we're going to put the ball tool in that gap there and bring this clay up and over like so then form the tip down like that when you take it off the ball tool we can then start to work on finishing off its shape so you're pushing that top edge to make sure that it's fully joined I want a bit more of a bulge there so I come in with the ball tool bring the shape that I want bring this down pinch it out like so that is your snail shell shape yeah like so I hold it up Whoop. there you go I'm so bad at getting the camera there like this if you're worried that your lines aren't as defined you can always come in with something that's got a nice ridge on it and just get your spiral in there but I'm quite happy with this one actually there we are snail shell now for the snail <clears throat> I've got chocolate and white mixed together seems to make quite a good snail coloured bit of clay I don't want a lot because I don't want it to become too big <clears throat> now what you're going to do is with your ball clay you're going to let's get this into a ball without a join line take one side bring it out into a teardrop like that then you're going to go the other side and do the same thing so you've got that bump in the middle make sure that you come in and make that more pronounced so you like that one end can be quite flat and rounded bring the other end out into more of a point like so yeah then put putting him down we are going to put the snail shell on the pointy end of the shell faces behind them the little curved base faces towards the face end so the roundier end you're going to get that little bump and you're going to push that bump into the shell to hold it see like so you can put on little tentacles if you want I just think that's going to be one more thing to snap off so <clears throat> starfish crab and snails so let's finish with the fun bit of putting them on now remember clean hands we don't want brown on any of the rest of it pick your crabs up by the back so you're not smudging the eyes and let's put on some crabs I'm going to put you I'm going to put a starfish down on the ground actually I think like that and then I'm going to put one of the crabs bothering the starfish. Let's get his little 
clipper around the starfish tentacle like so what do you reckon I think that's cute see he's like hanging above me a starfish now don't forget this is a model not a picture so you've got the back sides to do so do come in and let's place some starfish and some crabs let's put a starfish in here no that's too much pink together there we go one in at the back there like so oops I've knocked his white line let me get my ball tool and put it back in place see if you don't push those down when you place them you can knock their lines so that they snap there you go that's better uh, let's get me a snail in here like so uh, I am going to keep the crabs mainly towards the front because I've only got three of them so there are my three crabs let's put some snails on you can go in here don't snap you <sighs> that's what happens when you make it a few days before the joy of a ball tool for fixing a break is amazing actually let's bring you down like that sorry about this i'm just fixing up a break there we are that's better just come in with your ball tool and just push it with the tool and it will fix up nicely it's better to find it whilst it's raw and fix it than it is to try and fix a break in baked clay that can be very annoying and very difficult hmm where can the next starfish go up here once i've got these on i will hold it up and let you have a little look let's do that right and the last now can come in there actually that is two snails right next to each other would that happen possibly but you do tend to find there is territorial behaviors amongst animals that eat the same thing let's stick him down here that'll do it like that so we now have crab starfish and snails on it like so it is really busy and it ain't even done yet because next week i'm planning on coming in and putting in a couple of little fish and then it's going to be done i promise but a lot going on it's a real where's wally where's weldo but in sea creatures going on here so i'm pretty pleased with that i think it's looking think good it's um, I have had someone ask can you make this sort of stuff for your fish tank aquarium yes and no yes it's fine it's waterproof um, definitely don't varnish it that will not be good because the varnish will come off over time your fish will then be eating varnish not great um, so I would probably bake it and stick it straight in um, you may want to put something that's a little bit more weighty inside of it 
Thank you, Arty Hearty Life. You might want to put something weighty, like a couple of two pence pieces, a line of them on the base, just to in, and encase that in the clay. Or a chunk of steel if you got it. Or a chunk of steel if you got it. Something that will stop it floating, because it's PVC plastic polymer clay. So, kind of floaty, kind of light. Um, I have heard from people who say over time the colours start to um, fade when it's in water. Same as if you keep your pieces outdoors, like garden ornaments. It can fade its colour. But I think it's got a good year or two at least in it before that sort of stuff starts to happen. Everything's got a lifespan, but this should be good for a little while. But yeah, so any of this stuff that you need help with, anything you've got that you can suggest that you want me to do in future weeks. Oh, sorry. Oh, like, comment, follow, share, all the stuff that really helps build the channel. It makes such a difference to me. Um, I hope you all have a good week and we all get back on it next week with some little tiny fishes okay have a good week bye